Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In this video, we are going to install OpenWRT on the Aruba AP105 and configure it as an AP. For the Aruba AP105, we can just simply install the firmware via TFTP because they are checksum or signature checks of the firmware by the bootloader or U-boot. We need to make a dump of the current room, add the custom U-boot and write it back to the SBI North flagship of the AP105 in order to install OpenWRT. First of all, let's disassemble the AP105. It is very simple. We just need to open the four screws at the back with a screwdriver. After that, you will think cut or object to pry the case. This is the wallet card of the AP105. Let's remove it from the mainboard gently. In order to accept the flat chip, we need to remove the shoe. I'm using a slotted screwdriver to do that. Now, let's connect the North flat chip to the test cliff. Since this is my first time using it, I will use a multimeter to check if all the pins are properly connected. Perfect. It is all good. The Aruba AP105 is using the SBI North Flash from Macronis. The easiest way to establish the connection is using a Raspberry Pi. The connectors of the chamber wire is way too big for the test clip pin. Therefore, I have to shoulder some of the wire to the pin directly. The connection diagram is shown on the screen. After that, we will use the flash room application to back up and flash the custom U-boot to the flash chip. Whether you are using the Raspberry Pi with edit edge or the desktop GUI, the application will work just fine. In this video, I'm using the Raspberry Pi 4 with a monitor. By default, the SPI interface is disabled on the Raspberry Pi OS. To enable it, open Raspberry Pi configuration or type raspberry config in the terminal. In my case, the interface is already enabled. Let's have a look at the installation process. First, obtain U-Boot. Second, install U-Boot. And third, install OpenWRT. And here is a detailed guide on how to work with SBI flash chip with the flash room application. If this is your first installation, please read the whole process clearly before taking any action because a small mistake could break the AP. You can also check out this forum post from Chan Sen. This post has a lot of useful information which will give you some ideas to get started with flash room and SBI flash chip on the Aruba AP105. Let's begin the U-boot installation. With this command, we are about to create a full gem of the SBI flash. Before doing this, I will run ls slash dev slash sb to check if there is any SBI device. Great, we have two devices available, which will be good to go. Let's run flash room and see if the application is installed. If you see this message, it means the application is installed and ready to use. Let's copy the command and right click on the terminal to paste it. The 
the command is finished. We should be able to see the room file when running ls command. You can run the command again with a different name to create another gem of the SBI flagship. Now we will copy the room and rename it to custom room in order to modify it with the custom U boot. After that, erase the stock bootloader from the start of the image. It is time to apply the custom U boot to the image. Before that, we need to download the custom U boot. Let's download the file and extract it to the home directory. And then use dd command to apply the downloaded u boot to the image or the room. Once it is finished, we need to use flash room to write the custom room file to the SBI flash chip. Perfect. The modified room is written to the flagship and we can disconnect the test clip from the Aruba AP105 and begin the OpenWRT installation. For TFTPD, we need to configure a static IP for the computer network interface and start the TFTP server on that interface. Let's download the systemupgrade.bin firmware and rename it to firmware.bin. On the TFTPD64 application, select Browse and point it to the directory where the firmware.bin file is located. To project the service interface, it should have the static IP 192.168.1.101 which we configured previously. At this step, if you have a console cable, you can connect the AP to the PC and monitor the installation process. I have a Cisco USB console cable and I will use PuTTY to establish the serial connection. As you can see from device manager, the console interface is COM4. Let's input the same on the PuTTY application. When everything is ready, we need to press and hold the reset button while plugging in the power cable. Continue to hold it until both wireless LED on the right side of the AP blink red. At this point, the AP will automatically download the firmware from the TFTP server and install OpenWRT. It takes around 5 minutes to complete. We can see the progress on the serial console. If you don't have a console cable, please wait for 10 minutes and everything should be ready by then. As you can see, the AP is pulling the firmware.bin from TFTPD64 and the installation is starting. In my case, it takes around 3 minutes.
Looks like the installation process is finished. I will press the enter key and here we are OpenWRT 19.0.7 running on the Aruba AP105. As always, I will set a root password for the AP. We can see from the IF command that the default LAN IP of the router is 192.168.1.1 and the SCP server is running. I will change the network interface of the PC to the SCP mode and we should receive an IP address from the AP105. Perfect. Let's log in to the Lucy Web GUI. This is the first time in my life seeing the Aruba AP running OpenWRT. Now I will configure a static IP for the AP105 and turn off the DHCP server. I have two network adapters on the PC. The main adapter is connected to the router and the second one is connected to the Aruba AP105. Here in my current network setting, the gateway is 172.16.9.1 Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 or slash 24 GSCP range is from 172.16.9.10 to 172.16.9.250 is outside of the DSCP range and will be used for the Aruba AP105. If you are using a different subnet, for example 192.168.1.1/24, you can do the same by configuring a static IP that is outside of the DSCP range of the router and it will work just fine. For example, 192.168.1.5 and it should work. Let's go back to Lucy Network Interfaces and make the change on the LAN interface. Make sure you turn off the DSCP server by tick the box, ignore interface. After click save and apply, we can disconnect the AP from the computer and connect the AP to the switch or the router. We have 80 seconds to do this. After that, open a new tab with address 172.16.9.3 to accept the AP105 web GUI and confirm the change before it automatically run back to the previous setting. Now, Let's go to Network Wireless to configure Wi-Fi. This AP had two radio, the 2.4 and the 5 GHz radio. Let's enable it and configure one by one. Now it is time for a speed test. Perfect. With the phone nearby the AP, we have 175 MBBS download and 135 MBBS upload. This speed is faster than the stock firmware. I will run another two tests with BMON application to see the throughput for the Ethernet 0 port and top command to see the CPU users. The first tests were made with the phone one meter away from the AP.
I am able to get 200 Mbps download with the CPU at 74% idle. At 5 meters away from the AP, I am able to get 150 MBPS download and 130 MBPS upload. This is a really good result and it is unexpected from a 10 years old AP running OpenWRT. That's all for this video and I hope it will be useful for you. If you enjoy watching this video, please like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I will be see you all in the next video. Bye bye.